Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video. This one is rather exciting because we do have some pretty awesome stuff coming to the cartel market uh, for patch 5.2 and beyond. We also have some pretty bad stuff and as I like to do, rip the bandit off first. So let's go over some of the pretty crappy stuff. So we do have a few new armor sets that have been data mined. We don't know when these are going to be released. We don't even know the rarity of these items. We just have the images and their name. And so let's go through them really quickly. Unfortunately, as we saw with the last Vigilant Defender cartel pack, data mined armor sets they sucked i mean the gold stuff was terrible the silver stuff was terrible bronze stuff was terrible there was like one decent armor set there and unfortunately we're going to see this again so we have the dust viper bandit armor set first and we're going to see this um dust viper we have a port nowhere mobster hoth defender so i'm not sure what these names really are referring to but it seems like you know mobsters that we've uh, fought in the regular storylines for our class campaigns but in terms of the armor set design itself, that helmet looks pretty weird. The upper body armor looks okay, but there's this stupid antenna sticking out the back, which I think is going to actually end up ruining the armor set. And aside from that, I don't know, if it's like silver or bronze, hey, not a bad armor set. But if it's gold, I'm going to be a little bit disgruntled at that. The next one is Port Nowhere Mobster's armor set. Once again, unique. I'll give it that. Uh, it doesn't look like a reskin off the bat, but still. Just not really my cup of tea, but I can see it. The upper body armor being like, I don't know, for a Jedi or something, I guess that would be okay. The next one here is the Coolin Socialites armor set. This one just looks straight up weird. Uh, this looks like something someone would wear out running. Literally, that's like some that's like some fitness thing. Um, but I guess this is a Coolin, like, I don't know, fitness outfit. Uh, the upper body armor is a total reskin of like the concealed bodysuit, I believe the armor is. Uh, so that's a total reskin, but hey, you know, I see that type of revealing body armor with no sleeves and stuff. I could see that selling actually pretty well. So hopefully they don't make it gold. Like if they make it silver or bronze, that wouldn't be too bad. But that headband and stuff, just, ugh. Yeah, the upper body armor is okay. Other than that, I'm not really a fan of that armor set. Then the Hoth Defender armor set. Yeah, I could see this being a silver or a bronze. Um, I just don't like that style of the hood, honestly. I like the hood better where it actually, like, I don't know, protrudes a little bit more, covers your face a little bit more. This type style of hood, I'm not a big fan of, uh, but overall, not bad. Not bad, once again, for a silver or a bronze. I don't see any of these being gold worthy. None of these should really be a gold armor set, but knowing Bioware, they don't really care. They'll make like a, br a bronze looking armor set gold if they want to. And then finally, we have the Sith Hermit's armor set. Like the name, I like the Sith Hermit. Uh, but I don't really see the connection between this being a Sith Hermit's armor set. I mean, the uh, the hood and the helmet are literally the bestial fanatic. We just saw that armor set being released with the stalwart leader pack. And now we have like the exact same rebreather and the exact same hood style. Uh, the upper body armor design is obviously a little bit different, but still silver and bronze worthy, not gold worthy whatsoever. Anyways, those are the armor sets. I'm not going to spend too much time on them because we have so much more exciting stuff to discuss. But we'll quickly throw up the weapons here as well. We don't know the names of these weapons, but probably Ordtech something. I don't know. That's kind of the theme they've been going with. Now, this one follows a theme that I think has been pretty popular among the player base, actually. Uh, it's blaster rifles that actually look like real guns. I mean, look at this blaster pistol right here. It looks exactly like a real gun with like a little bit of modification at the top. I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, I kind of like stuff with fancy lasers sticking out or fancy effects. But, um, but I definitely see this appealing to some people. Going on to some of the more exciting stuff. That's kind of just those random patch 5.2 items. Some of these could be straight up direct purchases to the cartel market for all we know. Now we have some really exciting stuff, including new grand packs. So for those of you who aren't familiar with cartel market trends, one of the things Bioware likes to do is recycle old items. And I know that sounds negative, like recycling, but it's actually a good thing because Bioware has released packs since the start of launch, basically, like I don't know, a little bit after launch. And there are just tons of items in the game that are desirable that people want, but they just can't obtain because the pack that it comes from has been gone for so long. So Bioware always gives us ways by which you can try to get those old items back. Uh, the most notable would be Grand Chance Cubes, which we still have in the game right now. And then oftentimes they recycle certain packs on the cartel market. Uh, right now we have the Galactic Legends pack which gives you some of those rare items. This weekend, we'll see the Grand Nightlife pack, which gives you, once again, some of those old rare armor sets and mounts and stuff like that. And uh, also, usually in December time, they release the gold, silver, and bronze armor sets and the gold, silver mount packs. So those basically like guarantee you a gold armor set uh, that existed since the start of the cartel market. 
So you guys get the picture. Recycling these old items, bringing them back into the game, into the economy, being made available on the GTN. So people who missed out on those old cartel packs have a chance to get it again. So they're going to be bringing some new grand packs to accommodate some of the new items that we've been seeing. For example, the grand companion pack has been data mined. Now this is uh, a pack that contains one companion drawn randomly from all cartel market companions. Now I'll just let that sink in because that is pretty damn awesome, honestly. Uh, I would be up to buy a few of those depending on their price because look at the cartel market now. We have the Tukata Companion that's like 2,100 cartel coins and the Wampa Companion which costs around like 2,100 cartel coins as well. So if Bioware values a companion at being 2,100 cartel coins, imagine what this pack is going to cost. Like I would estimate maybe 1,000, 1,200 cartel coins around that area. So very expensive, but guaranteeing you a companion, ugh, that's going to be pretty awesome. I mean, you have a chance of getting the Act Dog, the Nexu, some of the really rare, rare ones. And to be honest, I'd say like 80% of the companions are really good. It's only 20% that actually kind of suck. Some of the droids suck. Obviously, the Warbot is like terrible, uh, but that's just one companion. The other ones are actually pretty awesome. And I would actually predict that this would break the GTN a little bit, honestly, because we have like no Act Dogs available right now. The Nexu is very rare. Any companion that gets newly released usually still sells for like three to five million credits, no matter how bad or good it is. Uh, so I would assume that this is actually going to break the GTN a little bit and really drop the prices of these companions. So a great time to pick them up if you need to collect them, a great time to buy low, sell high. But uh, we'll see. Once again, it will really be determined by what price they go for on the cartel market. And um, another grand pack is the Grand Shadow Pack. Now, this is just one specific pack that was data mined. The description reads, contains a selection of items drawn randomly from the Initiates, Pilgrims, Acolytes, Apprentices, and Master Shadow Packs found on the cartel market. Now, once again, I'll let that sink in because that is pretty damn awesome. Basically, it's a cartel pack on steroids. What Bioware decided to do is instead of bringing back the individual cartel packs, because that's what they usually do, like they would bring back the Acolyte Shadows packs, the Master Shadow packs all individually, they're saying we'll just give you one cartel pack and you'll have a chance to get armor pieces or mounts from all of the cartel packs combined. I actually really like this concept because um, basically it allows you to combine all of the awesome items that come from all of the packs into one cartel pack. So now when you open the sh this this new Grand Shadow Pack, you'll have a chance of getting Shea Vizsla's armor and a Savannah Varanticus and Revan Reborn and all the other really awesome stuff. And conversely, of course, that means more crap. But to be honest, if you buy the right pack, like if you buy the Explorers Pack or the Shadow Packs, uh, usually there actually isn't much crap in there. Everything is good. Some of the bronze stuff actually sells for very high prices on the GTN. So uh, if you know the right pack to buy, you are going to have a great job with these. And this just said the grand, this is just a grand shadow pack. They're probably going to be doing this for every single cartel pack as kind of a more condensed way by which they can recycle these old items. Because beforehand, they would just release all the cartel packs and that kind of didn't really work well in my opinion because not a lot of people ended up buying it because um, I'm not sure why, but I know that because the GTN didn't really get flooded with those items again. So that means either people were buying it and not selling it, just keeping it for themselves, or they weren't buying it at all. So that's kind of it for the two new grand packs that were data mined. We also have some other new bundles that, um, that we can see. One is, for example, the Advanced Agent Bundle. So this contains the Intelligence Officer Armor Set, the Aerotech Ghost Mount, the TAC HUD Heavy Sniper Rifle, and the DLA-13 Heavy Blaster Rifle. Now these are all already items that are available in game, but basically they're all items that are very much geared towards the agent. Uh, and so obviously, they're probably planning on doing something like this for all of the classes and it's just a way by which I don't know like maybe it's a nice gift to give because to be honest a lot of that stuff can be bought off the GTN for pretty reasonable prices and so um, there's really no point in paying a huge amount of cartel coins for it but if it's cheap enough it could definitely be worth it but it's probably more so like if someone just created a new imperial agent they see this bundle on the cartel market and they might want to look into buying it just I don't know for role playing sake or whatever nonetheless it's nice to see some of this new stuff I think once again it's a unique and creative way by which you can recycle these old items. Another type of bundle we have here is the Palace Party Bundle. So this contains, and here's a long list so bear with me here, the Formal Tuxedo Armor Set, the Exquisite Dancer Armor Set, the Stronghold Defenders Assault Cannon, Blaster, Saber Staff, Blaster Rifle, Sniper Rifle, and Lightsaber, so all of the Stronghold Defender Series weapons, the Rotating Light Red, the Arrangement Cafe Table, the Round Patterned Rug Gold, the Emote Xantha Emote Clue, and Hut Cantina Skiff. So quite a mouthful there, but a lot of items. Now some of those are 
like bronze armor sets, but the stronghold defender style, that's actually platinum. Those are platinum items because they're not really obtainable in the game right now. The only way to obtain them is from a rep vendor uh, or you can get them from grand chance cubes. So basically, once again, unobtainable. So the fact that they're being brought back in this palace party bundle means once again, prices are probably going to drop on the GTN. But this is what I like to see. I like to see Bioware take these items that basically can't be obtained anymore and bring them back so that people have another chance at getting them. Anyways, that kind of concludes the new cartel market stuff. Now this is very preliminary data mining, there's probably a lot more to come and so I'll keep you guys updated when new information comes out. But I just thought this is enough to kind of get the juices flowing, get people excited once again. I always get excited for these grand packs. I can't tell you how excited I was to see the gold armor packs return this December. Like literally I was insanely happy because, uh, because Bioware takes on a little bit of a roller coaster with emotions. First they release them, everyone's happy. Bioware says these are permanent cartel packs. They literally said the gold armor packs are supposed to be permanent on the cartel market forever. And then they, it just broke the GTN. I mean Revan's mask was like 4 million credits. Um, and so they just decided to take them away and they're like, we're never bringing them back again. And then they gave us, bring it back like, you know, every December. Uh, so it was nice to see those back. And I'm really going to be excited for these grand packs. You can damn well expect some pretty awesome pack openings. And then on a side note, just to kind of end this video, it does seem as though they're bringing the Dark vs. Light event back. Uh, they did mention that with new tiers, uh, hopefully new rewards. Like I hope they're not just going to recycle the rewards and, and give people another chance of getting them because, you know, for the people who did it, they're obviously going to need new rewards. But, um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Hopefully Bioware gives us some better rewards if they are indeed bringing this event back. And the data mining info does strongly suggest that they are going to do it. Uh, Musco had, did even say like when the Dark vs. Light event ended, they actually took away all the achievements. And when people asked why he took away all the achievements, he said, well, you know, it's in case we bring the event back. So they were kind of planning on doing so. And we're probably going to see it again this summer because that's what they like to do. They let the event run from summer all the way to December. So if you did not have a chance of getting that awesome XP armor, or if you guys want a chance of getting some new rewards and stuff, we're going to see that event probably come back. Anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for being with me on this one. I'm really excited for this and let me know what you guys think in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.